Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Here's your first day of class before your first day of class. Today, we'll discuss in our class, College Entrance Exams 101. Here's what to know. All right, so congratulations, by the way, because if you're listening to this podcast, it's likely because you're starting to prepare for your college entrance exams. If you're like I was in high school, you got very little idea of what you're actually getting yourself into. Rest assured, you have come to the right place. A college entrance exam is a standardized test used to measure your college readiness level. Apart from the written essay portion, which is used to test your ability to evaluate and analyze complex issues, Entrance exams are multiple choice and focus on things like reading, writing, math, and or science. Each test requires a few hours to complete, often done in one sitting with a single short break. Test results are then used by college admissions counselors to gauge your skills in logic, reading comprehension, critical thinking, and problem solving. There are a few different tests you can take to prepare for college admissions. While each exam type differs in some way, they all work toward the same goal helping a school evaluate your educational background. So, to better understand which test is for you and how to actually prepare for it, let's dive into the many facets of college entrance exams. Woo, this is exciting. Understanding College Entrance Exams The College Board was founded in 1900 to organize the college admissions process used by colleges and universities across the U.S. At its founding, The board served two distinct purposes. Provide a forum for discussing ideas or issues related to college access and admissions, and design and administer a standardized entrance exam to share scores with prospective colleges and universities. Enter what is referred to as the SAT, though other common entrance exams have come into use since then. Over 120 years later, most schools still rely on scores from these same entrance exams. It's true. Common entrance exams. All right, so the two most often used college entrance exams are the Scholastic Assessment Test, SAT, and the American College Test, ACT. That's what I took. Although colleges often accept either score to assess admissions and merit-based scholarships, here's a bit about how they differ. Test Structure. On the SAT, we have reading, writing, and language, math, with no essay. The ACT has English, math, reading, science, reasoning, I did awesome on that one, and optional essay. Length, about three hours on the SAT. ACT, two hours and 55 minutes, no essay. A little over three hours with the essay. About the topics. So the SAT, reading, has five passages. ACT, four. Science, nothing on the SAT. What? It's my favorite section. ACT, science, one section. That's why I took the ACT. SAT, math, arithmetic, algebra, one and two, geometry, trigonometry, and data analysis. Exactly why I didn't take the SAT. ACT, arithmetic, algebra, one and two, geometry, trigonometry, probability, and statistics. Because I'm a little better with stats. On the SAT, the scoring is a scale of 400 to 1600. That's confusing to me. And the ACT, rather, is a scale of 1 to 36. A lot of students end up taking both tests, given their similar content and scale. This can be helpful for a few reasons. First, submitting scores from both tests gives admissions offices more information to make a decision with, and more information is better in this case. Second, it increases your chance of receiving merit-based financial aid, either from the college itself or from an external source. And lastly, Being open to taking both tests creates more flexibility in choosing testing dates and also opens your options for schools you apply to. Beyond the SAT and ACT, the Classic Learning Test, CLT, is a newer option available to students created in 2015. The CLT founder wanted to provide an alternative standardized test rooted in tradition while taking advantage of modern technologies. With the goal of helping students become better human beings, the CLT is accepted as a replacement of the SAT or ACT by over 250,000 colleges. The test takes roughly two hours to complete and includes questions in verbal reasoning, grammar and writing, 
and quantitative reasoning. Like the ACT, the essay portion of the CLT is optional and adds about 30 minutes to the total test time. Let's talk about test prep. So regardless of which test you choose to take, knowing how to properly prepare for it can mean a world of difference for the outcome. So here are a few test prep strategies we recommend. Get started with the right materials. Request a test prep guide from your school or purchase one online. Make sure your guide has at least two full sample tests to practice with. Register for your test date. Visit the official exam websites to schedule your test date. And location. Give yourself enough time to study. At least three to six months prior to your test date, build a plan to study for three to five hours each week. Consider alternative studying methods. Find and enroll in either an online or local test prep class. Study with a friend group or hire a test prep tutor. Learn a few stress coping mechanisms. If needed, Find ways to naturally calm your mind, closing your eyes, counting to 10, or even chewing some gum. The testing environment can feel unnatural, and as a result, cause your nerves to spike day of. So I highly recommend you simulate the test environment you will be in. Quiet, time-constrained, extended periods of sitting, etc. to get comfortable with performing under pressure. Overall, just remember to pace yourself in this journey to prevent feeling overwhelmed or burned out. Consider creating a study schedule to help you or to help keep you accountable and on track or purchasing a preset study plan that outlines targeted study areas and exercises for each week. Time it right. Time is important to college entrance exams in two main ways. First is the actual timeline of getting from A to B. A being testing and B being receiving your first college acceptance letter. How far in advance you test depends on a variety of things, including how many colleges you plan to apply to, what those admission cutoff dates are, and whether you want to allow time to retest if needed. Most colleges have an offer acceptance deadline of May 1st, referred to as the regular decision deadline, though many schools also have an early decision cutoff the previous fall season for students who have their hearts set on a specific school. This means you need to schedule your exam far enough in advance to allow time to test and submit your full college application, all at least three months ahead of your desired college's application deadline. The second important time factor is, of course, managing your time in the testing room once your test date arrives. You want to arrive prepared for your big day. That may include wearing a silent wristwatch, being familiar with the exam format, and knowing your target score. But beyond that, keep in mind that each section of the exam poses a varied level of difficulty, so don't spend the same amount of time on each question. Overall, be sure to use all the time you're given. That means that if you finish a section early, take that extra time to glance back over your answers, especially any you felt unsure of at the time. So here's a general breakdown of each test format. Structure of the SAT, reading, about 65 minutes, writing in language, 35 minutes, math, 80 minutes. Structure of the ACT, if you look at English, about 45 minutes, math, 60 minutes, reading, 35 minutes, science, 35 minutes, writing, which is optional, one essay, 40 minutes. Scoring. You might be wondering what a good score is. Lots of articles note a good score is the one that gets you into college. (laughs) But because you're likely more interested in how you compare to others taking the test, here are just some overall stats to consider. Average 2022 SAT score, 1,050 on a scale of 400 to 600, 1,600 I should say. Average 2022 ACT, 21 on a scale of 1 to 36. Hey, I scored a 23. I'm above average. We have links so you can review more about the SAT and ACT scoring just to kind of get a full picture of how each is weighed in your admissions decision at thecollegeinvestor.com. But before you click the link in your email or log in to check your test score, take a deep breath. Did you work hard to prep for your test? Yeah. Have you been lying awake at night wondering how you did? Maybe. This is the moment of truth. But keep in mind, it isn't the full admissions package. Okay, so when college entrance exams aren't required, let's take a look at that real quick. There are times when a college may not require you to submit exam scores. It's true. 
It's referred to as test optional schools. These colleges allow applicants to forego submitting standardized test scores with their admissions application. This is sometimes only offered to students who meet certain GPA or class rank requirements. At other times, all students may opt out of submitting test scores. If your desired school is test optional, consider these alternative ways of bolstering your application or admissions application. Strengthen your GPA. Your high school GPA sends a clear message to an admissions counselor on how academically equipped you are, and it will be used to rank you among other applicants. A higher GPA can put you in the running for merit-based scholarships, so it's really something you'll want to focus on while you can. Enhance your extracurriculars. Extracurriculars. What a wonderful word. Communicate your commitment to life and hobbies outside of school. Demonstrating that you can balance your academic workload with personal responsibilities, though extracurriculars weigh less on your admissions decision, they can indicate your attainment of soft skills which are critical to successfully navigating your college experience, by the way. Let's summarize everything. The SAT and ACT are the two most popular college entrance exams used to complement your admissions application. Although if the CLT was available, I'd probably take that one. While not every school requires them, they can be an important indicator of your analytical ability and a predictor of your academic success. As you start thinking about college, Create a timeline to help keep you on track, including test prep, exam registration, and of course, submitting your college application forms. Graduation day will be here before you know it. That's so true. That is our show for today. I hope it was really helpful to you. If you have more questions, you can find us all over social media. We're here to help, and we'd love to get to know you better too. Just search for The College Investor and you'll find us. Also, thecollegeinvestor.com is where you need to go to find out more about all things college admissions, loans, loan payback, all kinds of cool stuff. And, of course, investment tips, tricks, and ideas, and side hustle ideas. Just all, all kinds of stuff. So you can just win at money. Thanks for stopping by today, and we'll talk to you again real soon.